Hello, everyone. My name is Tim B. Green, and this is Crush It Club, episode 56. It gets a little weird here today. The seven levers of influence, loss, aversion, pricing. So this is kind of a continuation of the idea from yesterday. And it gets kind of interesting because uh, loss aversion, if you watched yesterday's episode, is quite simply our aversion to loss of anything. And it has deep, deep evolutionary roots. That is, if you lost something 20,000 years ago, where our brain still sits in terms of behavior, um, you are basically screwed. You would die, you would starve, you didn't have your bow, you didn't have your fire, whatever it was, losing something was such a big deal that as pointed out by Nobel Prize winners for doing this research, that is prospect theory, um, Daniel Kahneman, Amos Tversky uh, found out that we seem to hate loss about twice as much as we like an equal gain. So based on this, which is one of Robert Cialdini's seven levers of influence, is we can nudge people towards buying, towards purchasing our products, and we can influence them or even go past influence into outright manipulation, which I discourage uh, by keeping it ethical and using honest numbers and honest frames about what people stand to lose and then standing up to your commitments about that. So it was like, this is a special price today. It should be a special price today. You should mean that. And that means you have to stick with the commitment and possibly even lost sales in the short term to have people trust you in the long term. So if you're going to use this at all, use it honestly and ethically, or it's just shadiness. But used ethically, it is not shadiness saying, you get a discount is not illegal. It's not unethical. You just have to actually mean it. So simple as that. So what I mean here by loss aversion pricing is um, Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein recently updated a book of theirs, which was Nudge. I think they called it Nudge the Final Edition. And it was good. It was better than the original nudge, though quite similar. It was better than the original nudge that was uh, written and made famous many years ago. And in there, they talk about a website called Stick. I think it was Stick, but I looked one up and there's another one called Stick. And what it is, is you make a legally binding contract where if you fail to reach or achieve a commitment as specified by yourself, you have to give um, a charitable donation to, a do to an organization you hate. So it's kind of a backward, it is like a, the stick and the carrot. This is definitely the stick. So the loss is if I don't live up to my commitments, I have to lose X amount of money and not just lose X amount of money, but lose X amount of money to a cause I hate. So if you love animals, you know, um, some organization that's associated with meat processing or whatever it happens to be. It really doesn't matter what it is. It's just something that you're morally opposed to, something you're politically opposed to, and donating to that. Now, I have my own version of this. It's not the same. This isn't about hate. This is only about hating loss. So I call it loss aversion pricing. Am I letting the cat out of the bag and perhaps compromising my own position in, in doing this? Well, yes and no, because I'm not worried about it. I hope that I'm the inventor of this, but it's based on the same idea as stick, but rather different. So for example, if for my products, one of the things I offer besides uh, a money back guarantee, a conditional money back guarantee, that is, if you use my consulting services, if you use them and you have a criteria of actions you need to take. So if you pay me for a period of time, which is usually three months, six months, or a year, all in advance, 
and then you fail to take the action. So you pay me the money to uh, help you find solutions, help you find better ways to run your business, to improve things, to fix problems you have in your business, and then you fail to act on the necessary actions, then you don't get your money back. If, however, you do the actions, none of which are difficult, and you would agree upon the actions as we went, and you still fail to take the actions, then you don't get a refund. But if you've taken all the required actions as set out during the program, and you fail to achieve the results, I would give you 100% of your money back. However, some people that might not be enough motivation. It should be. You get all the gain, you get the value of the program, and the gain of improving your business in any number of ways that I can help you with that, with what I'm calling neurocognitive design. And this is an example of that, and using one of Cialdini's levers of influence, very similar to the um, STIK uh, website I was talking about, that's S-T-I-K-K, where you donate money if you to an, uh, a charity you oppose if you fail to achieve it. So this is the same kind of thing, except instead of that, you can, at your own option, this is not required, this is optional, but you can, at your own option, pay me double my usual rate. And if by the end of the period, the contract period, the coaching period, the consultation period, you have achieved to, or you have failed to achieve your goal, I keep every cent. That means you stand to lose 50% of the money you paid me. And conversely, if you go through the entire process, that is, you take all the steps as per agreed, as we go along, changing course, if necessary, to help you achieve the goals that you hired me to help you achieve. If you achieve them, you get 50% of the money you paid me back. Now understand, this doesn't mean you get 50% off of the regular rates. It means I double the rates. So you're paying the same amount as you would under normal conditions, but you pay me twice as much to give you extra motivation because if you do not achieve, that is take the actions, outcomes are beyond our control, but process goals, that is the actions that you and I agree are appropriate and there are specific actions that you agree that you can do. If you do not act on, uh, make, take those actions, those process goals, act on them, which are always within your control, and you fail to do that within the specified contract period, I keep that extra 50%. So it really kicks in the uber loss aversion that you pay twice as much for not doing what you've agreed to do. And I get the rest. So this is what I call loss aversion pricing. I charge you twice as much and you get a 50% refund, half of what you paid back simply by going through the steps that you plan to go through anyway. But this gives you that additional motivation because loss aversion is so aversive to our species that it is a very strong motivator. You go through, you do your actions, you take those process steps and you get 50% you get or you prevent a 50% loss, that's it. That's loss aversion pricing. Now, feel free to use it. I would love it if you shared where you got this from. I'm not the inventor of loss aversion. Stick had already been doing this for charities, but unless there's some reason that this isn't, uh, unless there's some reason that this can't be done, and I don't believe there is, there you go. You say, we're going to charge you twice as much to motivate you, and you get half back when you take action. My name is Tim B. Green. 
I'm going to keep that in this time. I don't feel like reshooting this episode. My name is Tim B. Green. This has been Crush It Club, episode 56, loss aversion pricing in the series of The Seven Levers of Influence. Bye for now.